queen said, oh, well, that's, I'm getting ahead of myself, sorry. So, uh, verse 13, then Daniel was brought in before the king. The king spoke and said to Daniel, are you that Daniel who is one of the captives from Judah, who my father the king brought from Judah? I have heard of you, that the spirit of God is in you, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. Now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me, that they should read this writing and make known to me its interpretation. But they could not give the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of you, that you can give interpretations and explain enigmas. Now if you can read the writing and make known to me its interpretation, you shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around your neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. So why is King Belteshazzar talking to Daniel? Well, because King Nebuchadnezzar, um, King Belteshazzar's father, had made Daniel the chief of, from verse 11, the chief of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. And the queen had asked the king to talk to Daniel about these things because she knew from verse 10, uh, we can read verse 10, the queen, because of the words of the king and his lord, came to the banquet hall. The queen spoke, saying, O king, live forever. Do not let your thoughts trouble you, nor let your countenance change. There is a man in your kingdom, Daniel, who, in whom is the spirit of the holy God. And in the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, were found in him. So why could Daniel understand all these things? Why did he have this special talent? Well, because it's said right there, because in whom is the spirit of the Holy God, and from verse 13, that the spirit of God is in you. So why could he do all these things? Because God was not just with him, but God was in him. So then, because, of, because Daniel interpreted the king's dream, King Belshazzar made Daniel the governor. And I think we all know the rest of this story, but I'll go through it too. King Belshazzar's governors and state trap. They envied Daniel because Daniel was special in King Belshazzar's eyes. So they persuaded the king to sign a law that said whoever worshipped at another god or at the feet of another altar besides King Belshazzar would be thrown into lions. Okay, let's stop. As, as someone in the flesh, what do you think Daniel would have done? Would he have just paused and just like stopped worshipping God? Would he, because of he was scared of being eaten and afraid of dying? Well, no, let's read on. Daniel 6, um, starting at verse 10. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. Then these men assembled and found Daniel making, praying and making supplication before his God. So, did Daniel do what every human probably would have done? Did he stop right away? No, he did the total opposite. Right when he heard about this law, he went home, went on his knees and prayed, prayed and worshipped because he knew that God is in him and is with him. And so this is how... Um, King Belshazzar's men found him praying before God and so Daniel knew about this decree about this law but he didn't care why? because he knew that God was above all and should be worshipped so when the, pe when the king's men told the king the king was greatly displeased as in verse 14 and the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Deliver him. Because remember, the king loved Daniel. Daniel was so special in the king's eyes. But, from verse 15, Know, O king, that it is the law of the Medes and Persians that no decree or statute with the king establishes may be changed. So the king couldn't really do anything about the law that he signed. So Daniel was thrown in with the lions. But you're probably thinking, wait, if Daniel had a special relationship with God, if God was in Daniel, why didn't God stop this from happening? One reason, could be because God had a plan in all this. God was over this. He had a purpose for all this. So when Daniel was thrown in the lion's den, God closed the mouths of the lions, and God 
God calmed David because, you know, he probably would have been nervous just a little bit, you know. So God calmed Daniel's nerves. God had saved Daniel. I learned from reading this when I was in Fiji because, one, when you're in a relationship with God, he watches over you and he makes sure that his purpose for you is what he, so he can be glorified. Because in this story, it wasn't Daniel who closed the lion's mouth. It wasn't Daniel who overpowered the lions. It was God. So, what have we learned through this story? Well, what have I learned too? One, when, when we're, when we intimately know God, when we have a personal relationship with God, we gain wisdom right from wrong, discerning truth, or like Daniel in Daniel's case, we understand visions and dreams. Two, we can't be pressured by, by the world if that world is telling us not to obey God, not to worship God. And number three, if we serve God and obey Him, we will reap blessings. Thank you.